Hey friend, what's up? It's me, Devin Marvell, back again with another video. Thank you guys so much for clicking on this video. Go ahead and do me a favor, hit that thumbs up button for me, and I hope by the time we get to the end of this video, you all like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. So today we are talking about Love & Hip Hop Hollywood, season four, episode seven. So we're gonna go ahead and start this video out with Alexis Skye, because as usual, she's the one cast member who has the absolute least going on. So Alexis agreed to meet up with Solo Lucha, she, he called her I guess he said that he wanted to talk or whatever and she said that he sounded super sincere so she was like all right we could meet up so we see her she's big kicking it on the beach and solo Lucci comes up behind her and tries to grab her from behind and she's not having it she tells him why do you think that you can talk to me any kind of way and think that we're supposed to just be all you know buddy buddy friends or whatever solo is very apologetic about how things went down but he tells her like you came into the radio station and you embarrassed me and she she says, oh, well, your baby mama didn't pull up on me at my photo shoot or whatever. He's like, well, you know what? I didn't really have any control over that. And I'm like, he didn't. You know what I'm saying? Because how can you hold him accountable for the actions of his baby mama? He said that he would talk to her, which he did, and she didn't listen. So, I mean, it is what it is. But he tells her that too. He's like, you know, I talked to her. I don't have any control over her. She's going to do what she wants to do regardless. Alexis wants Solo to clarify the fact that she did not come through and break up his happy home, which he does. Solo Lucci also apologizes to Alexis for calling her pass around Punani. She forgives him, accepts his apology, but she says as far as them being a couple together, that's meh, it's done, it's over with. So Alexis is kicking it with Hazel E and Lyrica, and Lyrica is letting Hazel and Alexis know about her little run-in with Moniece at Marcus Black's little release party or whatever it was. So she's telling them all about how she got into a Moniece about Alexis Sky. Alexis says that she could be petty too and all she has to do is you know link up with her hundreds of thousands of followers and she could end Moniece with just one clip. Hazel says that the girls are jealous because Alexis is young and beautiful and she's this pretty young thing running around town. So Ray J is in the studio and says that he's trying to get his next hit out because he hasn't had a hit since Sexy Can I. And just to let you know how long ago that was, I was in middle school when that song came out and I am now a fully grown adult man in his 20s. So yes, it's about time for Ray J to get his next hit. So he invited Bridget Kelly to come work with him in the studio. I guess he rented out the studio for the whole week, so he says that he's gonna be working 24 seven. He lets Bridget Kelly know that they're gonna be working hard, they're gonna be working 24 seven. And Bridget looks around and she notices like a little sleeping arrangement in the corner and she's like, are you sleeping here too? And he's like, no, nah, I don't sleep, but I relax. Bray tells us that it also gives him time away from Princess so that he can, you know, just work and focus on the music and he doesn't have Princess trying to jump his bones so that, you know, he can go ahead and get his sperm count up. Like the doctor said, Ray, you gotta change your lifestyle. You gotta stop smoking and drinking and partying. That's why your sperm count is so low. He never said anything about avoiding your wife. I think that's probably the last thing that she should be doing. Uh, mind you, he still has not told her about his low sperm count, so we're still waiting on that. So Bridget and Ray start talking about the music and Bridget tells him that she really wants to bring her sexy side out. She says that in her career so far she's been doing you know lovey-dovey romance very melancholy type music and she's ready to show her sexy side. Ray J tells her you know he can help her but you know to see what he's working with he wants her to give him a little sample of a song so she starts singing a cute little song I guess that she wrote and it's, it's nice, it's a very lovey-dovey romantic song, I guess what she, that's what she does. But Ray J says this is the exact thing that she says that she's trying to get away from that she's sitting here singing up here. Ray J says lucky for her, Dr. Ray is here to help her out. So he tells her, okay, so pretty girl, that's what we need to focus on, you know? And I see you like on the piano, you need, you need to like get on top of the piano, you gotta like make love to the music, you know what I'm saying? And, and she's like, I don't know if I'm ready to be on top of pianos and all that yet. But he's like, yeah, yeah, but I, but I see you, I see you on a piano. And uh, I, I, I see you up there on the piano and I see you with the, with the fur coat on and a bikini underneath. And she's like, okay. 
and just going along with it. And I'm sitting here like, why is she even entertaining this mess at this point? But I mean, hey, when you need some TV time, I guess you gotta do what you gotta do. Plus, Bridget Kelly can't be getting on top of pianos because that's kind of Keisha Cole's thing. Did we forget? So then Ray goes ahead and proceeds to play a song that I guess he wants her to hop on with him. And the song is called, The Pussy Is So Good. Yes, that is what the song is called. That is how the lyrics go. And uh, I guess that he wants her to hop on this song. I don't know if he thinks this is gonna be his next hit, but it's not. So he plays the song for her and her reactions were killing me throughout. Like she looked like she just could not believe her ears and I couldn't believe mine either. Like Ray J, I just, I don't know whether he is trying to be taken seriously. I don't know whether he wants to be a comedian, but he is too funny to me. She tells him though, she's like, you know what? We really have to take this seriously because this is like a last chance for me. So Ray J tells her, pretty girl, this is what I do, you know? And, and I just feel like power is all up here to my mind. So then we see Ray J in the studio with A1 and he is playing this god awful song for A1, but A1 says it's lit, he loves it. And Princess walks in and Ray immediately unplugs. He's like, oh, hey baby, what's up? Apparently they haven't seen each other in a few days. And Princess is like, you know, like, can you get rid of A1? A1, do you mind if we have some time alone? And Ray's like, no, 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 we can't have no time alone because Ray apparently um, has been trying to hold back releasing if you know what I'm talking about. But unfortunately, I guess saw a picture of his wife and he just got a little bit too excited and he decided to go ahead and release, ruining all his hard work. So now he has to go ahead and build back up again, get his firm count back up and all that good stuff. And he can't do it, you know, if his wife's around. Princess doesn't know all that. So she comes in and she's telling him, you know, I'm ovulating, we need to do this. You know, we gotta do this today, we gotta do this tomorrow, we gotta do this the next day, the next three days, that's all we got. Come on now, put a baby in me. And he's like, you know, like, I can't, we can't, we can't, you know, have any alone time today, um, but you know, you're ruining it, you're ruining it because I, I had a surprise plan for you, you know what I'm saying? Like, I had a hotel room and it was gonna be like this and it was gonna be like that. And I'm like, Negro, you just made that up on the spot. Mm -mm -mm. She's like, okay, whatever. She decides that she's gonna go with it. So she leaves. So the next scene that we have with Ray J and Princess, they're going to the hotel. It looks like they're about to have their nice romantic getaway. And Princess is looking at the hotel and everything. And she's like, wow, this is beautiful. She seems like she's really impressed. And then when she looks a little bit further, you know, she keeps inspecting a little bit and she notices that there are like these professional photo shoot lights up and she's like, what's going on here? And Ray J's like, you know what? I was thinking that we could make a movie or whatever. And I'm like, Ray J, you already did that. And she's like, mm, I'm not sure if that's my style. Next thing you know, some random guy just comes out of nowhere uh, with the camera. I guess he's supposed to be the camera guy. And I'm like, what kind of freaky deaky mess does Ray J have going on here? I guess princess is thinking the same thing and she's like really what is going on and he's like yeah you know i'm gonna spend some long time with you but first you know i gotta finish up this photo shoot and she's like are you serious are you kidding me like she's like are you trying to piss me off he's like no baby no i just gotta finish this up so princess is pissed and she leaves but before she leaves bridget kelly comes out and the situation just looks all bad princess says hi to bridget and she dips out bridget doesn't know what she got herself into and but she figures it out and she's like oh this is just a mess so ray j goes after princess and he's like what's wrong baby what's wrong and she's like you're never going to change and he's like what are you talking about i didn't even do nothing like i just said i gotta finish up this photo shoot but we uh, we the people okay princess we're here girl i know exactly what you mean it's always something like she said uh last year he was obsessed with these scooty bikes and now you know he's all obsessed with the music uh, there's never any time just for her without him and his shenanigans like it's always something going on with the ray it's it's always some type, type of twist or something and I completely I completely feel where she was coming from he goes back in and Bridget's like why would you do that you got me out here looking crazy and not just looking crazy in front of your wife but you got me looking crazy because I look like a stripper mariachi like thing with this fit that I got going on and <laughs> princess called her Shirley Temple because she had the curls on her head like yeah, she didn't, she was not looking like the Bridget Kelly that walked into the studio that we saw earlier, which is crazy because 
she looked like a goddess then and all she had was like on a hoodie and some jeans so sometimes you don't need to have all this extra extra on when you're just naturally beautiful like homegirl is but bridget tells ray you know if they're gonna work together he's gotta do better ray j and princess are taking a walk on the beach he's trying to make up to her for that whole little debacle and he finally confesses to her that he has a low sperm count and she's taken aback and she's like how do you know this and he's like man i was a doctor and he tells her the whole story about how him and safari and a1 you know they have the bed going they decided to go get checked out and princess is just absolutely moved by this because she says that this is showing that he actually wants this too and that he actually cares. So I guess they're just gonna keep trying for a baby. He said that he's gonna try to cut back on the smoking and the party and all that good stuff. And Princess is super happy about it. So we'll see what happens with them. I hope that they do end up getting their little bundle of joy. Okay, so Tierra Marie. So Tierra goes to meet up with Amber Diamond. Now we were introduced to Amber Diamond last week because she was revealed as Cisco's side piece. They start off on a good foot. Amber's like, you know, he's told me one thing and I guess y'all got something else. He's been telling you a whole nother thing. He's told me that, you know, he's all about me. He's here for me and you're delusional. And Tierra's like, well, you should know better than that because you saw me pull up with him to the store. You saw how we were. And Amber's like, yeah, I guess you're right, but I'm not going anywhere. You know what I'm saying? So. Amber also tells Tierra that she's been staying with Cisco ever since that incident and that she's been up at his hotel and she invites Tierra to come see for herself to see what they got going on and see what Cisco's talking about. And Tierra's like, okay, well, I'll take you up on that offer, but what do you plan on doing? Do you plan on staying with him? And Amber says, yeah, I'm not going anywhere. And Tierra's like, why? Why would you want to stay with the guy that's out here making you look stupid? And Amber's like, I don't feel like he's making me look stupid, even though he is, girl. So Tierra agrees to go and ambush Cisco with Amber. Tierra says that she's gonna keep competing with Amber until Amber gets the boot and then Cisco's gonna get the boot. And I'm just like, yes, that's how you do it when you don't have no self-respect. So then we see Cisco and Amber and they're canoodling in the hotel room and knock, 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 who is it? It's Tierra Marie. So Tierra comes in and I, uh, you know, Amber's like, oh, we have a little, we have a visitor, come out, Cisco. And Tierra's like, yeah, come out, Cisco. So Cisco comes out the bedroom. He's got lipstick all over his little bald self. Tierra tells Cisco, and you sitting here big kicking it, you got lipstick all over you, you got your socks off. I haven't even seen you with your socks off and I'm like girl you have been having sex with this man and you have not even seen him with his socks off like okay Cisco says that he was just enjoying Amber while Tierra just has been stressing him out from the moment that he got to LA so he tells Tierra you know I was just trying to figure this whole thing out you know with us and all that but I'm done with Amber I'm done Amber's like you're done with me okay that's fine I'm not gonna stay where I'm not wanted she goes to get some clothes on gather her things and get up out of there and he's like no Amber don't leave don't leave baby don't leave and then Tierra's like, don't leave. Well, fine, then I'll leave. So Tierra goes to leave. And he's like, no, Tierra, baby, don't leave. Don't leave, Tierra, don't leave. And Amber's like, well, ain't this about a... Because when I'm about to leave, you say Amber, don't leave. And when Tierra's about to leave, you say Tierra, don't leave. So which is it? So then Cisco, I guess, he just gets frustrated at this point. He's like, well, what do y'all want from me? You were stressing me out and you were fun and da 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 uh, Tierra's just like, you know what? Amber used to love him. Good luck on y'all love life, whatever. I'm out. So Tierra goes to leave and um, Amber follows right behind her, leaving Cisco and his little ball self just right there. So Monice had a lot going on this episode. So we first see Monice and Masika. They are recording their podcast, which is called The Clapback Recap. Um, I'm not familiar with it. I had no idea that they had this show or had this podcast or anything like that. From what I got from it is it's just them talking a whole bunch of shit about people, um, especially their castmates. So they start going in on Hazel E and then they start talking about Miss Nikki baby saying how she's had all this plastic surgery and she looks like a hoe and I'm like is plastic surgery really that taboo? I mean really especially in LA like is that really a diss at this point? And then y'all two especially okay okay y'all two especially uh freaking Monique sitting up there looking like a Bratz doll with her tig old bitties. And don't even get me started on Masika who looks like she is smuggling two little people in her tops. Like, huh? Y'all got the nerve to talk about surgery? Surgery? Come on now. So they start going in on Miss Nikki Baby. Masika says that Miss Nikki Baby shouldn't be walking around acting all high and mighty when she's out here sleeping with married men. 
Uh, I don't know what the proof is of this. I can't wait to see how that story unravels. I'm sure that we probably won't go any deeper into that story until we actually get to the reunion, but we'll see. So Monice tells Masika about her, how she's supposed to go get brunch with her girlfriend AD and her girlfriend's best friend Tiffany, who she does not like at all. And she explains that she doesn't like her because she feels like Tiffany is in love with AD, number one. And Tiffany is also disrespectful to her. Was she is worried that she's gonna have to drag Tiffany at this brunch. So then we see Monice at brunch with AD. AD is trying to tell her, you know, be on your best behavior, just be cool or whatever. And she's like, all right, I'm gonna be chilling. Tiffany walks in, she sits down, and she gets straight to the point. Uh, she lays it all on the table. She says, you know, Monice, you're not really a lesbian. I feel like this relationship is just convenient for you. It's convenient because she's got a good career, she's got her money, and she's spending all this time with your son. I'm only sick offense to that, as she should, because homegirls try to call her an absentee parent or a bad mom or whatever. And this is constantly being brought up. Actually, it'll be brought up again later on. We'll, we'll get to that. Monice tells her, I take care of my son and nobody else. And I don't need anybody else. You know, I'm good on, all by myself on my own. Tiffany is saying, well, that's just not what I heard. And she said, well, where did you hear that from? And she's like, well, AD told me. And I'm like, mm. well, this relationship is over. It needs to end right now. AD did admit before that she was probably running her mouth a little too much, telling Tiffany a little bit too much about her relationship. And this is a perfect example of, yeah, you did. When you are in a relationship, you can, you can only tell so much to your friends about the negative stuff if that kind of makes sense. You don't want to tell them every single thing because then they're just going to think that your boyfriend or girlfriend is a piece of shit and they're going to tell you, they're going to think, why are you with them? And they're going to constantly tell you that you should break up with them. But that's only because you're venting about the negative stuff. You're not highlighting the positive stuff all the time because I guess that's what's expected in a relationship. If this girl has the perception that Monice is a bad parent from AD, then Monice definitely needs to leave AD. So I guess that AD sees that all of this is kind of getting a little bit heated. So she says, you know what, this isn't really going anywhere. Monice, do you feel bad about all the stuff that you were saying about Tiffany? I mean, you were calling her a thought, you were calling her this, you were calling her that. And Monice says, no, I don't feel bad about it. I don't feel sorry, I'm not taking it back. And Tiffany is like, well, how dare you have the nerve to call me a thought and a walking condom when, hello, I'm a stripper and I talk to these ball players and these rappers and they have had a lot to say about you. And I was like, ooh. So Monice tells Tiffany, well, you know what? We can talk when you can hear me as a grown woman. And Tiffany said, well, that went out the window as soon as you said that you weren't gonna apologize for the things that you said about me. So Monice gets up to leave and everything stays unresolved. So then Monice goes to see Marcus Black who is performing. Um, she says she's supporting a new artist because she herself is a new artist. Have any of y'all heard music from Monice yet. I have not heard one song. Can she actually sing? I mean, what what is going on? I feel like it's been like a good, like every season that she's been saying that she's going to be doing this music thing and where's the music? Monice is there at uh, Marcus's little party and performance or whatever and she's chilling with Nia and they spot Alexis Sky and they're cutting their eyes at her and Alexis is chilling with Lyrica and Alexis tells Lyrica look I gotta go because I got a gig to host and she tells us you know she was tired of them cutting eyes at her anyway so she got up out of there so then Lyrica goes to greet Brooke Valentine who was also there and she's like, what are you doing here? I thought you and Marcus were done. And Brooke's like, yeah, we are done. And he's still in the doghouse, but I just came here to look good and show him what he could have had. Lyrica invites Brooke to her listening party and Brooke's like, oh wow, so it's a listening party. So that means the album must be done. And Lyrica's like, well, it's, it's like a pre-listening party. Uh, Brooke's like, okay, girl, well, you've been working on this album for a very long time. What's good? And Lyrica, she doesn't say it's a Brooke's face, but she says in the confessional, Pretty much, I think what we were all were thinking, which was Brooke Valentine has some nerve to talk about somebody not releasing music in a long time when I mean, we have not heard anything from her since Girl Fight back in what, 2004, 2005? Like, girl. But Lyrica says that her and A1 are making beautiful music and that's all that matters. So then Lyrica goes over to Monice and Nia to invite them to her pre-listening party and Monice is like, well, tell me who's all on the guest list. And she's like, well, Tierra, Alexis, and Monique's like, eh, go ahead, stop right there. If Alexis is gonna be there, I'm not coming. 
And Lyrica is like, what's wrong with Alexis? And Moni says, she disrespected me, this, that, the third, and my loyalty lies with Masika. And Lyrica is like, oh, so it's a Masika thing. She's like, no, it's not a Masika thing. It's just, you know, she disrespected me and she called me a hoe and a bitch and this, that, and the third. So then Moni starts going in on Lyrica for being friends with Alexis and saying that she doesn't want to associate with anybody that associates with her and just, just you know, blah, 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 all that reality show. You can't be friends with her. You can't be friends with me if you're friends with her type of thing, you know, just petty, pettiness. So Lyrica is fed up and she tells Nia, you know what, I'll talk to you when you're not here with your sidekick. And that pisses Monice off even more. And she's like, I'm nobody's sidekick. And she goes in on Lyrica even further. So Lyrica walks away, but she overhears Monice talking about how she wants to be her ass. So Lyrica's like, you gonna be my ass? And Monice is like, that's what has to happen. And I'm like, y'all, y'all gonna keep playing on Monice, but she is crazy. That girl is crazy. And she's clearly about that action. Like. Why do y'all keep testing the waters with her? One of these days, she's gonna snap on one of these girls and it's not gonna be pretty, I'm telling you. So then we see Masika and Nia and they're house hunting for Masika and Monice is supposed to be there, but I guess she's running late. So when she finally gets there, she congratulates Masika, all that good stuff, but let's go ahead and get some of the meat and potatoes of everything. So she tells the girls, I ran across this clip of Alexis Sky talking ish about all of us. So she shows them the clip and Alexis Sky is on Instagram or whatever she was on, calling all the girls out, saying this about Masika, saying that about Monique, saying this about Nia, like um, just going in and saying that they were jealous of her. And you know, Masika's just rolling her eyes. She's like, jealous of what? And she's showing off her fake body. Like my fake body's better than your fake body. Well, Monique is the one who took hella offense as she should because Alexis also got on there talking about how Monice is a bad parent, how she can eat but she doesn't feed her son and just talking all this cash shit. Uh, Monice says, you know what, I have to be her ass. <laughs> and that's just, that is just how Monice rolls. That is how, you know, how it works and that's real, you know. Oh, she's talking shit, I just gotta beat her ass. So I'm like, but that is a well-deserved ass whooping because you don't bring people's kids into anything. And at the end of the day, do we have proof that Monice is really this terrible, awful mom that people try to make her out to be every single season? Every time that she gets into it with somebody, they bring up her parenting skills and it's annoying because it's like, what proof is there? Like, but is there actual proof that Monice is an unfit parent? I mean, Anyways, well, that's all that went down this episode, and that's all that I have to say about it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know in the comments what you thought about this episode. Do you guys think that Monice is a bad parent? Do you think she should stay with AD? Do you think that she needs to beat Alexis Sky's ass? Does she need to beat Lyrica's ass? I hope not, because Lyrica's a sweetheart. She means well. We'll see. Thank you guys so much for watching. I love you for watching. Make sure that you guys follow me on Twitter and Instagram at stairway 2 devin That is D-E-V-E-N. And everything that I do will be at stairway devin as well if you guys want to find me. Thanks for being a friend. Bye.